The other thing that's uh, about the spinning Earth is looking at the stars. Now, um, directly above the axis of spin is the pole star, Polaris, okay? Um, directly over the North Pole. And um, we're told that the reason that all the stars spin around the, uh, the, the North Star is because the, the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Okay? Seems to make sense because if you put a long exposure camera uh, pointing at the North Star, you'll see um, the stars will make perfect circles around, perfect star trails. The only problem is the, um, the Earth is also orbiting the Sun at 67,000 miles an hour. Okay? The Sun is moving, dragging the Earth and all the, all the planets up that way or that way um, at 600,000 miles an hour. So why do we see perfect circles? You know, because that's the slowest speed, <laughs> that's um, uh, slowest motion in that, in that mix. And, and yet, the, the Earth is moving 67 times faster that way and 600 times faster that way. So you should see the stars do all sorts of strange mo um, motions, but you don't. You only see them make these perfect circles. That tells me that it's the stars that are moving, not the Earth. The, the thing is, what, what the scientists will give you is calculations and, uh, you know, and theories why that happens, but we have experience. We, we see things and they either make sense or they don't make sense. And what the, the scientists do is substitute our, our common sense and our intuition for calculations and theory. And we're supposed to believe the calculations rather than what we experience uh, ourselves. Um, there was a famous experiment back in the 1800s in England uh, called the Bedford Levels Experiment. Now, the Bedford Levels is a, a canal that uh, is perfectly straight for six miles, okay? So what um, a chap called Samuel Rowbottom did was he took a telescope, put it in the water about eight inches above the water, and he had a friend, yeah, um, had a friend in a rowboat with a flag on the back, row all the way to the other end. And he was able to see the, uh, the flag on the back of the rowboat the whole distance. Now, according to spherical um, trigonometry, um, the curve of the Earth is eight inches per mile squared. So um, over five miles, um, that's um, five times five, 25, um, times eight, which is 200, which is, works out, that's 200 inches, which works out at 16 feet. That means the boat should have been 16 feet below the horizon. He shouldn't have been able to see the boat. Now, um, you know, the scientists will say, oh, refraction and this and light bending around the earth and stuff. Um, but, but the fact is, you know, it was, it's perfectly flat. And, and he, he, in his book, he's, uh, he, he puts forward many, many arguments that show that, or many, many experiments that show the earth is always perfectly flat. They say that the, you see the, uh, the mast you know, go, go down last. It's, it's literally just the way your, your vision works. Yeah? It's perspective and, and atmospherics, basically. Um, the, you, the limit of your vision is supposedly three miles. And then after three miles, you're supposed to see the, the boat start to uh, go over the horizon. It's funny that Neil deGrasse Tyson, again, says that, um, explains that you can't see uh, the curvature of the Earth from a plane, he says this, you can't see the curvature of the Earth from a plane because you're not high enough. The Earth is so big that um, you can't get high enough to see the curvature. Yet, you can apparently see a boat go over the curvature over the, th over the distance of three miles, which doesn't make sense. The thing is, when you, when you um, look out and you see a boat start to go over the horizon, if you suddenly get a pair of binoculars and look, it comes back again. And once it goes out of the sight of your binoculars, if you get a telescope, yeah, it comes back again. It doesn't go over any, any, any curve of the horizon. What we found, um, many people have done experiments with uh, very high-powered zoom um, cameras. And they, they've watched a boat go sail out to sea, and they've just kept trained on this, on this boat. And what they see is, after a, a very long distance, you see an atmospheric effect where um, 
the bottom of the boat disappears and starts and, and the top of the boat inverts so you see a sort of mirror image and that um, with your eyesight you know you basically the bottom of the boat just melts into the uh, into the horizon one of the best examples of that is the um, Antwerp Notre Dame Notre Dame spire which can be seen something like 240 kilometers away from uh, you know, from the spire. So um, that should be over a mile below the horizon, and you can still see it. Um, there's been a few famous examples uh, just recently of uh, a man who took a picture across the Great Lakes from Michigan and was able to see, I believe it's Chicago, um, which he shouldn't have been able to see. And the, uh, yeah, and the news, uh, the television um, station basically said it was a mirage. This is from Joshua Nowicki, and what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake that we're actually seeing a mirage of the Chicago skyline. Um, but you. <laughs> they always say it's a mirage, but um, for a mirage to happen, you have to have very specific atmospheric um, conditions. And there have been so many people who have seen exactly the same thing on different days, different seasons, um, always the same. Um, you know, it's not a mirage, it's simply that you, you know, you're, you're looking across a plane. You see in a kind of pyramid shape, yeah? You, you, you have a horizon at your eye level and everything above the horizon um, will go down into the horizon. Yeah? Everything below the horizon will, will seem to go up. Just like if you look in, you're in a long hallway, you'll see that the, the walls will start to move in and the roof and the, and the floor will start to move into to the centre. Yeah? So literally, um, between you and the object you're looking at, there's all sorts of, uh, of things, sort of like waves going up and down. And while you can't see them, if they're beyond the limit of your sight, they're still, sometimes they can still obscure what you're looking at. Um, but it's just because they're between you and it. And um, it's just the way, it's literally perspective. Um, um, it's better if I could uh, draw a, a diagram, but uh, it's a very difficult uh, subject to, to get your head around if you're not used to it. Um, but it is perspective. Um, one, one sort of other proof is, um, there's a place in Bolivia called um, Salar de Uyuni, which is a, a salt flat. It's literally 100 miles um, wide one way and 80 miles across. And it's perfectly flat. And when it rains, um, literally uh, you get an inch of water and it looks like a perfect mirror. Um, now, how does that happen on a, on a, on a, a, a sphere? Yeah, it shows you that you know, if you're one end of this, this salt flat, you can see perfectly clearly the other end, 100 miles away. Um, so it's just showing you that uh, you know, um, the, the Earth is flat, and um, without the effect of the waves in the sea, you, you'll, you'll be able to see um, a whole lot further.